Welcome to Fall Girl, the Michelle Carter podcast. Saturday, July 12, 2014, 6 20 p.m. 18 year old Conrad Roy III drove his grandfather's Ford F 250 to the Kmart store at Nine Plaza Way in Fairhaven, Massachusetts. He pulled into the side lot next to the garden center and parked out of view. The sun would be down by 8.20 and the store would be closing at 9. Traffic that day was usual for Kmart. Even if someone noticed the black truck in the darkness, employees only have one thing on their mind after clocking out, going home. And people rarely, if ever, pay attention to other people sitting in their parked vehicles. Sometime between 7.12 and 7.58 p.m., Conrad made sure all the windows were up and the doors were shut tight. He turned the ignition off and put the keys in the center console. He tucked his cell phone in the waistband of his shorts. He was wearing a baseball cap and black sunglasses. Powering up the gasoline-fueled water pump that lay behind him in the cab, he sat back and rested himself against the seat. There was no one in the truck with him. He was alone. Everyone wants me to live, and it's putting so much pressure on me to stay alive. It's like I'm only staying alive for them. I'm able to tell you what I'm going to do, and you support me on it. I don't want anyone to feel guilty about it. Nothing they can do. After I turned 16, it felt like my whole life was over and I couldn't be happy. I just have a big family who loves me and I feel he's going to grieve me. I worry about what's going to happen to my mom most. All she wants is for me to be happy, but I can't seem to find happiness. I don't want my parents to feel like failures. Maybe they did some things they shouldn't have, but I don't know. On the morning of July 13th, 2014, Fairhaven Police Officer David Dave Correa was dispatched to 13 Hamlet Street in Fairhaven, Massachusetts. Conrad's mother, Lynn, and her boyfriend were at the residence. Lynn told the officer that her son was missing. Under normal circumstances, a missing 18-year-old wouldn't be that urgent, but considering Conrad's history of suicide attempts, Conrad's case became top priority. Lynn showed Officer Dave a photo of Conrad. After writing down Conrad's information and the license plate of the vehicle he had been driving, he filed a missing persons report with the National Crime Information Center. He issued a bolo, be on the lookout, to Fairhaven, Mattapoisett, and Ashinet. A bolo is a broadcast issued from a law enforcement agency to others typically containing information about a person or vehicle of interest. Officer Dave called dispatcher from New Bedford and requested they too issue a bolo. Officer Dave contacted AT&T and requested they ping Conrad's cell phone. They were able to determine that Conrad's location was north of 13 Hamlin Street, approximately in the area of Costa and Sons Livestock and Sales a five-minute drive to the Kmart on Nine Plaza Way. Around 5.30 p.m., the officer began searching for Conrad. He started on Fish Island in New Bedford, home to the Tucker Roy Marine Towing and Salvage Company, but there was no sign of Conrad. Returning to Fairhaven, he drove over the Ashenet River on the Fairhaven Bridge. Taking a right off the bridge and onto Middle Street, he decided to check the Seaport Inn and Marina. There was no sign of Conrad. As he pulled out of the Seaport Inn, he saw a vehicle that matched the description of Conrad's truck driving down Middle Street. It was a black Ford F-250. Officer Dave followed the vehicle to see if he could read the license plate. It continued east on Washington Street, past the Fairhaven Police Department, past the Fairhaven Fire Station, past the Fairlawn Mortuary, until it turned into the Kmart parking lot on Nine Plaza Way. 
The truck he was following drove behind Kmart, but it disappeared quickly, and Officer Dave lost sight of it. Continuing to drive in the direction of the phantom truck, he noticed a second truck out of the corner of his eye, another black Ford F-250, parked. Upon further inspection, he saw that the license plate matched the plate of Conrad's truck. Officer Dave pulled up behind it and parked his car towards the left rear corner of the truck. He got out of his vehicle and began to cautiously approach from the back driver's side until he reached the driver's side window. He could see a body. Moving closer, he was finally able to identify the person sitting in the driver's seat. It was Conrad Roy III. Per his safety training, he called the Fairhaven Fire Department, only two minutes away from Kmart. Lieutenant Walter Therian, the shift leader that evening, arrived on scene. He assessed the vehicle and determined it was safe to open the doors. When he opened the driver's side door, he immediately checked for a pulse on the body sitting in the driver's seat. There was none. Conrad Roy was seated face front. His shoulders, neck, and head were slumped to the left, and his head had fallen between the headrest and the door. His arms were rested on his thighs, with his hands curled into weak fists. His left leg was slightly bent to the left, and his left knee was leaning against the door. His right leg was directly in front of him. Both feet were tilted off the floor. His skin was red, especially around the nose, which is common after someone inhales a fatal amount of carbon monoxide. He was not breathing. He had no pulse. The temperature that day had been around 84 degrees. Although his skin was warm to the touch, rigor mortis had begun to set. He was wearing a baseball cap and black sunglasses. His cell phone was neatly tucked in the waistband of his shorts. The keys to the truck were in the center console. There was no indication that Conrad had tried to fight death. On the contrary, his position and composition suggested that he embraced it. Officer Dave and Lieutenant Wally called the paramedics. Joy Nichols and David Gordon arrived on scene. David Gordon determined that Conrad was beyond medical help, which is considered an unattended death, a death that occurs outside of a medical setting. When an unattended death occurs, certain agencies must be notified and an investigation must be performed. The State Police Crime Prevention and Control Unit, the Fairhaven Chief of Police, the Fairhaven Police Detective Division, and the medical examiner's office were notified of Conrad's death. The medical examiner's office took custody of Conrad Roy's body. His body was removed from the vehicle and placed on a gurney by LeBeouf's livery service. Conrad's cell phone was later given to a detective. The battery was dead. In the back of the cab, situated between the driver and passenger seats, was a portable gasoline engine. The ignition was on, but it was no longer running. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts Medical Examiner's Certificate of Death, Conrad H. Roy III, male, date of death, July 13, 2014. Place of death, in car, in parking lot, age, 18, date of birth, September 12th, 1995, birthplace, New Bedford, Massachusetts, never married, occupation, tugboat deckhand, method of immediate disposition, cremation, place of disposition, Riverside Crematory, Fairhaven, Massachusetts, date of disposition, July 16th, 2014, Manner of death, suicide. Describe how injury occurred. 
Inhaled carbon monoxide in closed car with running gas-powered water pump. Portable generator, that's it. It's an internal combustion engine. There's one at work. It's portable, I can carry it. I was thinking turning it on in my truck and passing out asleep. Yeah, I'm gonna fall asleep and peacefully die. And the best thing about it is my truck doesn't have to be on. I can park somewhere and croak. I just have to get the keys to the storage area where it's being held from my dad. They're in his truck. It was later discovered that Conrad had been in contact with a friend via phone calls and text messages in the hours leading up to his death. She was the last person Conrad Roy spoke with before he took his own life. That friend was 17-year-old Michelle Carter from Plainville, Massachusetts. They had met in 2012 and lived less than an hour away from each other, but their relationship was strangely fictional. In the two years they had known each other, they had only met in person a few times. Nevertheless, it was Michelle whom Conrad confided his deepest and darkest thoughts. He even went so far as to threaten her if she told anyone about them. Michelle would pay a price for keeping those deep, dark thoughts to herself, and it would be far more detrimental than any time spent behind bars. I was on the phone with him and he got out of the car because it was working and he got scared and I fucking told him to get back in. It was this statement that would convince Judge Moniz that Michelle Carter was guilty of wantonly and recklessly assisting in Conrad's death by suicide. On June 16th, 2017, Michelle Carter was convicted of involuntary manslaughter. She served 11 months and 12 days of a 15-month sentence beginning February 11th, 2019, and was released early due to good behavior on January 23rd, 2020. Michelle deserves to have her story told by someone who is not out to harm her. Stay tuned for part two of Fall Girl, the Michelle Carter podcast.